let's let's give these guys a hand. To all our fathers, happy Father's Day. I could almost say what Mamurti said and say to her, Amen. 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 May the Lord strengthen you to become true fathers that you will close the gap of fatherlessness in the land. May he give you long life and good health. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Just want to introduce to you Pastor Hastings Longway. Long way. I was going to keep quiet until you say it correctly. <laughs> long way, Muruti, long way. Unfortunately, his wife could not be here, but I know she's watching. I will know more about him. You will know about him. But the ones where uh, the leaders were here during our training they they got a taste of his ministry amen amen so i'm going to ask him to just raise his hand no stand up and just say hi this is, this is hastings okay i don't call him pastor hastings i call him hastings i'm the only one who must do that here Amen. Amen. Well, I want to start a new series. This one is serious. <laughs> tell your neighbor, this one is serious. If they don't hear you, just tell them, this one is serious. So. <laughs> I want to talk about honor. Uh, so let us go to the word of God we welcome all those who are streaming with us the Lord bless you let's read Revelations chapter 4 verse 9 to 11 the Bible says in the New King James Version it says, whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Can you see what, 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 what the elders are doing, the 24 elders? The Bible says the 24, uh, no, not the Bible. Some of the, 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 the Bible uh, uh, expositors say the 24 elders are a representation of the church. And a, a crown is something that you have worked for, something that you deserve. It is your position, your prestige. But look at what they do when they honor God. They take everything that that crown represents. And they remove it from their head. Remember that the head is a representation of authority. Yeah, authority. Yeah. 
That's why the Bible, when the Bible say, talks about the husband, he says he is the head. Covering. And so they take that which decorates their lives. Everything about everything about them. And they throw it down at his feet as a sign that they honor him. Let's read another verse from the Bible, Revelation chapter 5, verse 13. And this is what it says. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, I heard saying, Blessing, and what? And honor, and what? And glory, and what? And power be to him who does what? who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Now, what fascinates me about this verse is that the Bible says every creature which is in heaven and on earth, I'm telling you, even the ants were saying Blessing and glory. Yeah. Be unto him. Now I want you to realize that honor is a kingdom principle. Yeah. It's a kingdom it's a, it's more like Mulao or a principle. Yeah. Honor is a kingdom practice. Part of our spiritual maturity involves maturing in knowing how to honor. And when honor causes spiritual maturity, it also brings prosperity into our lives. And it causes us to walk in divine protection. Somebody say, I'm listening. <coughs> Excuse me. So every son of God, every child of God, needs to understand what honor is in order for you to practice it accurately. Understanding Understanding as a principle is the final position before practice. In other words, you cannot say you are practicing anything correctly until you come to the position or the place where you understand it. You know, in our language, we have this thing here, you've, you've heard that, ne? Hey. What are you doing? And sometimes when you ask that question, what are you doing? It actually includes within it the question do you understand what you are doing? You understand? So if we cannot come to a place where we understand honor, how, how can we practice it? We, we will do things that we think it's, uh, we are honoring 
or we are practicing honor and yet we are far from the truth. Now also, we need to see honor as a fundamental building block of our Christian character. Yeah, similar. When you say character, yeah, similar. Your Christian character, it must be infused with, with honor. Because honor is part of the substance of character. Remember what we said when we were talking about uh, never stop growing. We said character comes before before gifting. Your character comes before gifting. So you have got to be to grow in understanding honor before you can put Faith in your gifting. You see, within our our character makeup, honor is the compass. You get what the compass is, ne? Yeah. It's that thing that shows the core, the direction is that it, it's the one that gives direction honor must become the compass that directs your gifting it must even give direction to your spiritual and natural resources. Honor must teach you how or give you a, a direction when you are blessed this way. This is how you do it honorably. Second Corinthians chapter two verse four. Yeah, two, 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 four, yeah. Paul said something along those lines. Paul says, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame. Renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. He says, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Paul is here explaining that when you know the word of God, you can handle it deceitfully. In other words, no, deceitfully. Yeah, yeah. You can misuse it. You can use the word of God to deceive people because of the way you put it. And people will think you, you are a person of mysteries and yet you are a deceiver. 
But I told my wife about a, the, a, a, a series that I watched. I couldn't look at it for too long. A man who was able to abuse women, sleep with young women, literally use them as his tools. Using the word of God. And they say he reads the Bible, what, five times? He reads the whole Bible five times every year. Beloved, listen to me. Do you know that demons can preach the Bible? Are you hearing what I'm saying? You need to know the truth in order for you to know how to deceive. You know what I'm saying? Because when you know the truth, you know where to twist it. Where nobody will see that you are twisting it. Then you can use it deceitfully. And Paul says, we are doing it truthfully. We are handling the word of God carefully. Even our consciences you can check them. We use this word uh, for what it is meant for. That is honor. You become honorable with what God has given you. So when God begins to bless you, when God begins to promote you, you must not forget the principle of honor. Because once you become honorable in the way you function where God has placed you, then you will even attract the grace of God more. I told you it's serious, I get it. And Elias would have a holy serious, I get us. You know when it's serious, I don't shout. <laughs> when we talk serious thing, I, I talk. I, I, I don't <laughs> Because we need to discuss sometimes. In the Hebrew mindset, the meaning of honor is to swell up. Yeah, to swear, to, to become big. It is to favor. Honor is to be high. Honor is to be glorious. Yeah. Honor is to put forth. Words, to, yeah, to put forward. You know, in biblical times, your honor used to determine your social status. And honor came in two ways. It was either ascribed uh, how do we yeah, yeah, we agree, yeah. yeah, more like an inheritance, yeah. It was either ascribed or uh, it was acquired. 
kgotsa we agree we better get we better get okay ascribed honor was based on your background. From which family are you born? Because some, there are some people who, like they put it in English, there are some people who are born with a, a, a silver spoon. Some of them is not a silver spoon, it's a golden spoon. You know, so to be born into honor is like to be born uh, into a, a family that rules. Or who are leaders. Who are wealthy. That is the honor you are born into your born and then as you grow you are given honor you are honored because that's where you come from that's where you come from it is ascribed but there is also those who acquired it through the things they did, fighting in wars and stuff like that, coming from nowhere and just achieving greatly. That's why in the Bible, when you read the issue of genealogy, who's, you know, genealogy, whose son are you? Was also taken seriously to know where are you born from? When, when David brought down Goliath, it's very strange that uh, uh, Saul saul who knew that this boy is Jesse's son still asked whose son is this? You understand? And then in the Greek mentality honor is weight. Mm. Weight. Honor is value. The worth. Honor is dignity. Honor is to be precious. Somebody say, I'm listening. No, somebody say, I'm listening. In the kingdom of God, honor is a value system. Hmm. Value system. 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 The word system. The system. The word system. Yeah, it's a maiz. It's a maiz. Honor is a value system. Within the economy, More economy of the kingdom of God. It is our ability to discern and value what is valuable according to the mind of God. No, not uh, uh, it's your ability to discern and to see what God says is valuable and you make it valuable because God says it is valuable, it has weight. You honor it. Now, let me sound like I'm, 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 I'm digressing, but I'm not. But I want, I want you to join this properly with, what, uh, with honor. You see, in the kingdom of God, we ne? have a multiplicity of relationships that we have. We have many connections 
we live in. We live in many connections. Remember the last time we talked about relationships. We spoke about your relationship with God. Relationship with your spiritual parents. Relationship with your peers. Relationship with uh, those who uh, you, you must mentor, those you must bring up. And relationship with the world. You see, this network of relationships in the kingdom of God, you need them all. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All these networks that God has put in place within the kingdom, you need them. I need them. The kingdom is relational. Amen. Okay. And it is essential that all these relationships grow. Because they are the ones that are essential actually for our growth but also for our protection. God uses these relationships to protect us. And so that we can be able to protect each other. So all these relationships I'm talking about, they require honor. They must be founded on honor. Amen. And they must sit on honor. The relationship with God means you must honor him. Relationship with your spiritual parents even the leaders in the house must honor them. Relationship with your peers, your friends <coughs> must honor them. We need to learn how to honor one another. If, even the little, the little ones, the the people who have just been born again recently. Must honor them. <laughs> if you tell someone who is spiritually, allow me to use those words, if you tell somebody who is spiritually lower than you, I'm just, I'm, I, I'm just using it so that you understand. I, I don't mean it in the bad sense, I get it. Somebody lower than you spiritually, if, if you say to them, I will phone you at this time. If you can't, tell them why you didn't. Apologize. Don't just say, ah, that's what you need. Oscar, no, no. Honor them. Amen. As just an example in passing. Your, the, 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 the relationships within marriage. There is this notion that uh, the Bible says wives must honor their husbands. Do you know that the husbands must also honor their wives? If you don't know it, now you know it. Amen. <laughs> Wives must be honored. 
When the Bible tells children, children, honor your parents. Can you see all these relationships are based, they must have a foundation of honor in them. It even goes outside the kingdom where we have to honor our leaders. Our civil leaders. We have to honor them, respect them. Chai. This honor thing. First Peter chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. Peter Peter chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. I want us to read it together. First Peter 2 verse 11 and 12. I'm not seeing it on the screen from the corner of my eyes. So but it says, Beloved, let's read it. Go. Beloved, I beg you, as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Verse 12. Having your conduct, let's read it, go. Uh -huh. That when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works which they observe glorify God in the day of visitation. Verse 12 says, having your what? Conduct how? Yeah. Honorable. The Bible even tells us in public, in our uh, social life, we must be honorable. What is to honor? You may have gotten it by now, but let me just make it clear for those who may not be seeing it. What is to honor? To honor is how you respond to a person or a thing according to the weight or value you attach to it. Meaning that the weight of value you attach to a person will determine how you honor them. Weight of value you attach to a thing or a situation, it will determine how you honor it. So honor, to honor is to respond according to an understood value. Which means every reaction that we Illicit or we release in our lives to any person depends on what value you place on them. And when honor begins to take over your life or become infused into your character. This is where you become honorable. 
Let me give you another meaning of honorable. Another meaning of honorable is to be guided by honor. You know, you so honorable people are guided by honor. Yeah, Mar, you know what? To tell the truth, when you are honorable ne, and you are guided by honor, and listen to this, and, and it also means to be morally good. To be, to be honorable, you are morally good. You are better. You are fair. You are honor. You are honest. Honor. Honest. And then at the end of the day, you are worthy of honor yourself. <laughs> so honorable people are eventually worthy of honor. Because they always give honor and do things honorably. How many of you remember that Jesus said, Do unto others as you would that they do unto you. Amen. 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 People will speak to you the way you speak to them. Amen. People will treat you the way you treat them. So when you are honorable, you make yourself worthy of honor. Somebody say, I'm listening. Because Galatians 6 verse 7 says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Now, as I begin to harela, I want you to understand that God is the custodian of honor. In heaven and on earth. Honor is what God says, not what people say. What God defines as honor is honor. And what God rejects from being honor is rejected. Which means you cannot honor what God rejects. You should not honor a behavior God rejects. You should not honor a character God rejects. You cannot honor a system God rejects. Somebody say, I hear you. You see, brethren, if there's a time the church needs to be strengthened in truth, it's today. Strengthened with truth. Yeah. 
It is today. If there's a time where we need to understand who we are, to say, when you say, I am a son of God, I am a Christian, I am born again, you should understand what that means. Beloved, you know, I was thinking about something as I was driving coming to church. That God, who is a spirit, creates a world which is visible tangible and he being a spirit wants to manifest in that tangible world but he is intangible amen and he did it deliberately because he knew how he being intangible he knew how he being intangible will be able to be manifested tangibly in a tangible way. He did it deliberately. He knew how he will do it. That is why when God created man, when it came to man, God said, he did not say, let's just make man. He said, let's make man in our image. Amen. You see, you need to understand this. You need to understand this. God works through the principle of representation. Amen. The unseen God knows that he has created man. And when man fell, brought Jesus. And we all came to Jesus and became children of God, sons of God. And God said, I have an avenue. I have a door of making myself known even though I am a spirit. I have people. I have sons who must understand it is them who must make me tangible. Amen. Every single one of you, including myself, we have a responsibility of making an unseen God seen. The principle of representation. In one form or another, all of us, in one form or another, wherever we are, we are representing him. We are there to make a world which does not understand him, has never seen him, are confused about him, don't believe he exists. We are there to say he's real. He is there. 
He is alive. He speaks. He heals. He delivers. He is God. He is true. You can see him. Look at me. Amen. Jesus. The world is changing, Bazalwan. The world is changing. And the change that the world is going through looks negative. But can I tell you the truth? How would God be known that he is light unless there's darkness? I was sitting at home and thinking, I said, South Africa is not going under. I said, South Africa is not going to die. I said, South Africa will not be destroyed. How can I say that when I know the prophecies about South Africa? How, how can I say that South Africa is going into the doldrums? South Africa South Africa is, 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 is being annihilated. When God spoke long before today's problems, when God said that out of the south of this continent there will arise a light that is going to come a glory that will move from here into the rest of Africa and go into the whole world. How can I say South Africa is dying when I am the light? When I am the light, when I'm supposed to be the answer, I am busy joining people who don't know the God I know, who don't understand the God I understand, who don't pray to the God I pray to. And I'm busy joining them to say this country is going nowhere. This nation is going somewhere. Amen. This country is going somewhere. Country A. What we are seeing today is just God removing what needs to be removed, shaking what needs to be shaken, uprooting what needs to be uprooted. But at the end of the day, let all men be liars. But let God be true. Hallelujah. And it is this church that I'm talking about that must begin to know itself. To know itself. To know itself. To know itself. For we are not supposed to be taken up by modern trends. You are not supposed to be taken up by modern movements. Do you hear how I pray for the children every morning? Do you hear how I pray for children? I pray like that deliberately. When I ask God that you are the one who made them in their mother's womb, so they must never be confused about whether they are boys or girls. 
You made them in their mother's womb. You are the one. They, they don't need to decide. They don't need to decide who they are. You have already decided when you were knitting them in their mother's wombs. Their responsibility is not to decide, is to discover who they are. Amen. Hallelujah. Child of God, I'm telling you, truthfully so, know yourself. Amen. Know yourself. Know who you are. Know, know on whose side are you. Know on whose side are you. Some of you are not aware. Or probably most of you are not aware. That the Bible today is being put through AI. Is being taken through, uh, what is AI? Artificial intelligence. To be rewritten so that everything that is offensive should be removed from the Bible. And there should be a Bible that is friendly with everybody. It will not offend some people. Let me tell you something. The Bible itself says the day of the Lord is a day of provocation. When sometimes when God comes, He shakes our comfort zones. That's how the day of the Lord sometimes comes. If you do not know Him as a holy God, if you do not understand Him, it's a God who must be honored when you reach a place where you are being pressurized not to say certain things but you know that if you don't say those things you are dishonoring him you will end up capitulating being broken down by pressure and because of fear you will choose to dishonor God You will choose out of pressure to dishonor God. Because you are afraid of being labeled as intolerant. A trouble a troubleshooter. Revelations, listen to that. Revelations 5.13, that second part. I'm talking about honor begins with God. Revelations 5, that second part. 5.13, that second part. It says, to the one sitting on the throne and to the lamb belong praise and honor and glory and power 
He is the one sitting on the throne. And he is the one who after Jesus, after what Jesus did on the cross, he is the one where, who the Bible says about in Philippians 2 verse 9 it says therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him what the name which is how which is above every name that at the name of Jesus what must happen every knee should bow and every no, of those things that are in heaven and those things that are on earth, and those things that are under the earth, and that every tongue should do what? Confess. Confess what? That Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father God gave Jesus the most honorable name Amen God gave Jesus a name that is honorable above all names. Some of you are not aware that it, it is the reason why in any setting you could be in a taxi in a bus once you say Jesus everybody is going to Amen. you know why because you have just called the name that controls environment you have just mentioned the most honorable name Amen. Honor Kutu. begins Isimula. with God. Kamujim. God Mujim. is the one Kiena. who sets, you know, the value systems of the kingdom. He determines the value systems of the kingdom. <laughs> God said you will honor me. God said husband uh, wife Musadi. Honor your, your uh, uh, husband. husband. Honor your wife. God said, Lead, uh, followers, honor your leaders. Amen. God said, honor one another. Did you hear what I'm saying? He is the only one who said, you honor me. There is no husband or there is no leader who ever says or who has the right to say, honor me. You know why I don't have the right to tell you to honor me, to honor my wife, because God has already told you that. Because Hallelujah. 
For you to honor me is not because I feel or I would say I deserve it, so you are going to do it. No. You honor me because God told you to do so. Hmm? There's no husband who must go to his wife and say, you must honor me. Or a wife who, have, who must say, you must honor me. Mm -mm. It is a system. The boss has already determined it. It's God who says, wife, honor your husband. Husband, honor your wife. No parent needs to go to the children and say, honor me. No. It's a system. It's in the system. It's the one who sits on the throne. When you dishonor, where you are supposed to honor you are not just dishonoring the one you are not dishonoring you are dishonoring the one who told you to honor amen honor is a system of the kingdom. Amen. But here's the big thing about honor. It puts you in a position of blessing. You will hear as we will be going through the weeks. When we continue to unpack the principle of honor. How? God. You know, can literally. Give you authority without a word simply because you are an honorable person I'll close with this simple example I've said it many times but it does happen how many of you have seen that if at your workplace you make your stand clear you make your stand very clear that you are a God fearing either young person or whoever but you are God fearing And then you find people, you know, sometimes you have these, uh, what is this, uh, conversations, people are, are, are together, and they are, they are talking, it's, it's just talk, you know. But when the talk begins to go to that direction where, you know, it becomes vulgar, abominable, and you walk in. They'll look at each other and it's all gone. They keep quiet. The conversation, even if they are not talking about you, they keep quiet. And if anybody continues about hey, where now, who do I want to remove Can't you see the pastor is here? You can't talk such things. You get weight because you believe in weight. Amen. Let me tell you what's going on. I've been, I've been, how, how do I put this? 
I've been kind of asking God. Saying God, see this 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 end time, end time, end time what? End time revival. Please, I want it to happen in in my lifetime. And I realized the reason why we are in the so-called apostolic reformation is so that when that when God begins to release that power. God will have washed off all you know nyaga nyaga all our nyaga nyaga. You, know, you, you understand? All our personal nyaga nyaga. You know the, 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 the pride the selfishness the narcissism, you know, narcissism. <laughs> Somebody reacted like they know exactly what that term means. Mm, the, 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 the sense of self-importance. The, the, Uh, I, I have to put this right. The, you know, the the attitude, the mindset of, th- of thinking. You can you can do your own will, and then and come back and tell God what to do. You understand? The fights. The bitternesses, the 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 the, the party spirits, you know, the, the grudging, you know, everything. All this nyaga nyaga. Where we are going to start coming back to honoring him, fearing him, respecting him, being quick to repent. I never Zalan, let me tell you the truth. Me, these days, if I see there is something very ugly about my personality, something very ugly that I think is not it's unscriptural I go to God and I describe it exactly as it is and I say it's a belief it's a belief help me with this thing amen if I start sensing that there is something very ungodly wanting to come into my life, I say, God, I can see that. That dog is that. There comes a dog. Protect me from that dog, Lord. I don't want to dis. Whatever. Protect me from that dog. Amen. I hear you, Guruji. How many of you know it's better for you to tell God a problem that has never happened rather than for you to repent? <laughs> It's better. It's better for you to tell God. Lord, I'm getting tempted to steal. Hey, and I don't know how to handle it. But my hand, my hand is itching to steal. Rather than for you to wait, that you steal. And then it's only then that it's your own. Father, Father, forgive me.
just sit, Mama. Can somebody minister to this lady? Mama Ruth, can you just come and pray for her and ask God to give her peace? That God will give her peace. And I show her it's okay, it's all it's fine. Are you hearing me, Bazalwa? You hear what I'm saying? It's better. Because when that thing comes, you are going to do things that are amazing. God wants it to be such that you see, after he has promoted you and and done all those things. Okay, you can take your seat. It's fine, eh? The Lord is with you. After God has done those things, hmm? then you will say, I was just representing him. I didn't do it. Stop calling me a great man of God. Call me the man of a great God. You understand? There are, there are things that must melt. There are things that must die. There are things that must melt and die. And then you'll see. You're going to see young people like those. Walking into a school. And turning it upside down. Young people like that. Just, just coming in. Having heard. Having heard heaven, having heard heaven, hallelujah. And then when they walk into the class, they just do things and they start being respected and feared. So, as a Lord, let's, let's know ourselves. Know who you are. The world is fast changing. There are changes we need. There are changes we need to go along with. But there are changes we must never even move an inch. We must just stand and say, Mina, no, I don't do that. Why? Because I am born again. I don't do that. Because I am a child of God. Father, help us. Father, help us. Yes, Lord. Teach us the principle of honor. Give us the right perspective of honor. Oh, yes, Lord. Forgive those of us who are compromising. Yes, Lord. Forgive those of us who are trying to fit in. Yes, Lord. Who are trying to fit in. Yes, Lord. Forgive those of us, Lord, who are craving for acceptance yes. at the expense of your name. Jesus. Forgive those of us who are selling out your name just for people to love us. Yes, Lord. Return us, Lord, to yourself. Return us to you. Yes, Lord. 
Yes, Lord. Return us to you. Yes, Lord. So that we can be able to represent you Jesus. correctly. So if you are here today and you are saying, I want to give my life to Jesus, I am surrendering my life to Christ. I am not right with God. I am a sinner. I need Christ to change me. I want to invite you to come so that we pray with you. Or if you say, I am a backslider, I've lost my compass. But today, I really want to make right with God. So wherever you are, if you say, I, I need that prayer. Can you just stand up? Wherever you are. And then make your way up here. It's been good to have you today, and I'm sure the Lord has spoken to you. Well, let's meet again next week. Remember, nine o'clock. We have our service in the building, 9.30, we go live. So I would like you to help me. Just like, share, subscribe, and let's get the gospel to go viral. We want Jesus Christ to really be Lord. Until next time, from me, bye-bye.